Welcome to Legends of Change on NBC One. This is the program that brings you gripping and motivating stories about ordinary people that remain role models during this time of the pandemic. I'm your host, Matthew Maps Kapofi. On tonight's show, firstly, the woman that we're talking about joined a male-dominated profession many years ago. And guess what? She is doing a remarkable job. But the reason that she's on tonight's program is that she decided to use her skills to manufacture something that a lot of our families needed during the time of the pandemic but could not afford. You're about to find out more. Here is Kathy Namunjebo. Good afternoon, my name is Kathy, Kathy Namunjebo. Um, I grew up in Sokopmont. I was raised by my great-grandmother who's 107 years old. Growing up in Sokopmont, seeing a lot of German ladies doing this or owning this type of um, businesses on manufacturing of furniture, it's really drawn my attention to become a carpenter or a woodworker. I know it's not an easy job. It's a little bit dusty industry and it's hard working. At times you cannot even do your nails or you know you cannot do it works. It's a little bit of, yeah, the they ladies in Swakop, they inspired me more. Historically, Carpentry was a field dominated by men, simply because it required cutting of heavy trees, lifting of wood, and shaping them into all sorts of things. Over the years, however, technology has made the carpentry profession much easier with machineries and tools, which slowly started to accommodate more and more women. Kathy Namunjebo is the founder of Kathy's Joinery and Renovations, a business she founded in 2009 after graduating from the Wintook Vocational Training Center, WVTC, where she received a qualification in joinery and cabinet making, calling herself the queen of joinery. Finishing my high school in Colin Foundation, and um, I applied then to VTC, whereby I, I didn't have funds to qualify to go to university. And yeah, it's VTC, Vindu Vocational Training Center is where I have enrolled myself. I spent the five years whereby I supposed to be only three years because of challenges and many people didn't really believe in a woman that is doing carpentry. Everybody at that time of, let's say, let me say 2205, two, they normally believe in a woman that is doing, mostly doing, um, if you go, if you are a nurse or a doctor, then they will believe in you. But if you are from vocational, then they will not believe in you. Raised by a single mother, my mother didn't really understand the industry of uh, woodwork. She, oh, she wanted me to do hospitality. Grow up in Swakop Mountain, I used to work in a hotel, so she didn't really understand this whole thing. She, and I'm telling you, most parents want their kids to go to university. Only now that the people are realizing that it's very important for for most of the students to go to vocational education. The importance of vocational education is only coming out now. But we need more artisans in the country, as women at large. I've been in the industry for 12 years. Immediately when I finished my college in VTC, I was working for different companies, like Chinese company, just to get experience, German company where I was also sent to Germany for a year and a half and I got so much inspired because in Germany they believe more in artisan. They really believe more in artisan and um, vocational education. So it's, it's, it's makes me to fall in love more with woodwork. There is ladies that are really doing 
houses from scratch in wood. There is houses that I've seen in Germany that are made from the ground just with wood and it really inspired me a lot. When I was in Germany, you are trained actually to make most of the things that are made in wood from uh, chairs, tables, and uh, also coffins. And uh, yeah, it's something that I've already learned in Germany. And I, I even had catalogs, but because of funds, at times you don't have money to start this, this business. But in, they, in Germany, they use solid wood, very beautiful hardwood and then um, I've made the research to put up together with what I've learned in Germany and then I just started to manufacture it and what pissed me off actually is we are in Namibia we can manufacture it maybe because we did not show our talent I've seen that most of our coffins are manufactured in SA whereby we can do it. The same bots they are using in SA is the same bots that we can use here. It's only that we don't have solid wood and they are made in boards. When I, I made the research and I found out that the same boards that we use cupboards with, there's actually no difference. The same boards in your house that you use to make kitchen cupboards, bedroom cupboards, it's basically the same boards that we use to make coffins. Unless you want the sprayed one, of course, we also have furniture like TV stands that are sprayed made in uh, Superhood. When Namibia reported the first two cases of COVID-19 in March 2020, a state of emergency was declared by the Namibian head of state. Deaths started increasing in the country due to the pandemic and coffins were not affordable for many families. It was then that Kathy saw the need to provide good quality caskets for anyone and everyone to be able to bury their loved ones in a dignified manner. Looking at the, the time of COVID-19, people were really dying and for me, it's not that it's, it's business for me, it's just feeling pity for people who could not afford. So we decided to come up, to team up with Otto, where we made good quality coffins, but reasonable price. Because it's COVID, you know, businesses went down, most people were not working, and even in our industry, people cannot afford to, to buy expensive coffins and that's why we came up with that, where people could buy a coffin for 3000 to 4000 whereby at most of the shops are very expensive. But it's good quality, it's the same quality. You can even come with your design, we can do it the, exactly the way you like it or the way you want it to be done. Here's the plastic. Let me come show you the plastic that we put underneath. and then cloth. So we put this basilapuga. On set, yes, plastic, you see, to protect the hood. This is protecting the hood. So all over, we put plastic. The pandemic surely left a lot of us to our own devices, always trying to assign meaning to this new life without our loved ones. Oh, okay. Yeah, then this, so this come here and then you put it just to beautify the whole thing. I'm also into tuck shop, small shops where I go deep in Katutura, whereby people cannot just to cut them short to go to the shop. So I open small shops in Katutura. So they, they, there is a lot of kids. So what I normally used to do is I buy toys, I go play with the kids. I told, I teach them about COVID-19, you know, for them not to be afraid because this pandemic needs a lot of counseling. People need to understand this. You see? 
So what I do is I concentrate more on the kids. When they go back to school, they must not fear. It's a pandemic that is there, that is gonna be there. We all don't know. So when I'm teaching them, I bring them sweets and toy, and I do um, like a kitchen soup, uh, the soup kitchen thing at Kathy's Tuck Shop in Koreaha. Being a single mother, um, my daughter made me to work harder and uh, what ins inspired me most is, um, I, you know, I'm not getting salary from, or I don't have any income. So most of the time it's my heart working. Faith, I always have faith to, that even no matter there is this pandemic, I woke up and then I come to my factory, even if there's clients or there's no clients, my faith drive me to work hard and most of the time to work hard for my family. My future plans is to open up a Kathy vocational training center. It is already registered, but I want to concentrate more on vulnerable children or the drop out of schools or people who fail grade 10. Because most of the vocationals are looking at those who pass grade 10. But then you found people that um, they have, they know how to work with their hands. Academically, they are not smart, but they know how to work with their hands. They fail grade 10, but not because they could not understand, but maybe they, are, like I say, they are people that are made with hands to work with hands. So I want to concentrate on vulnerable children and also the, the deaf kids. Recently, I'm also training the deaf kids. Um, uh, um, with the NTA. NTA is helping me, the apprenticeship program. So my VTC will be more, we will concentrate more on vulnerable children and the people who fail. Not failing because they could fail. Some people fail because they could not understand the teacher. But then there are those that can manufacture with hands. Is let's, let's just have faith. Actually to everybody, let's have faith. Because most people have lost hope in what they are doing. Businesses have gone down. Even us, our business went down, but still we are coming to work. We sit. As long as you have faith, God will also help you. So I'm just encouraging the youth. If they, you have something in mind that you want to do, never give up. Even if you have to open up a tax shop at your house, even if you have to sell in front of your, your yard, just do something that can bring bread on your table. In our help segment today, we are always happy to report that people who have been on the show continue to inspire and help people around them. Remember Andrew Ihinda? Not long ago, he came back on the show having totally transformed his life. So this time around, Andrew was touched when he read an article in a local newspaper of a 12-year-old Peter Nsamba who lives with a medical condition called pseudoarthrosis in the Okahanja Park informal settlement in Wintook. Andrew knows how it feels growing up as a disabled person without any means of mobility and this understanding led him to create a WhatsApp group to help him collect donations to buy Peter a wheelchair. We say don't give to gain but give to inspire others to give. From me Matthew Mapskapofi and the rest of the team We'd like to say take care and stay safe.